Fur trader explorer Peter Fiddler passed through this area in 1792. As producer Terry Vo tells us, Fiddler's contributions have largely gone unrecognized. Until now, we have a first account of that journey for your information. When Peter Fiddler first gazed at the Livingston Range, there were no fences here, no farms, just prairie and a formidable mountain range. This was the territory of Indian tribes like the Blood, Blackfeet, Muddy River, and other southern bands, tribes that had driven the Kootenai Indians farther west, across the mountains. 200 years may not seem like that long ago, but when Peter Fiddler came through this area, there was no trading with Indians on the west side of the mountains. It was Fiddler's job to make contact with the Kootenais and establish trading links. He did get some furs here, but he mentions in the journal that they're pretty ratty looking furs. Bruce Haig is with the Historical Research Centre in Lethbridge. He's come to the Livingston Gap to retrace Fiddler's historic visit. No, he came here, and this is probably where the playing ground was. Then he went up to where the racehorse is. And, uh, I really find it exciting to, to go back and, and put myself in the place of the first person that ever recorded being at this spot. It's the fact that he was in our country, amongst our Indians, our people. And I always feel that it's important to us in southern Alberta to know more about the man who was here, who described the life of the Indians, the buffalo hunts and, and uh, the, the climate and the, and the uh, scenery and all the rest of it. Dr. Jim Cousins launched the history program at the University of Lethbridge. This is his first trip to the Livingston Gap since he first started researching Peter Fiddler some 20 years ago. When I was looking around for something to, to research, he was the only one nobody seemed to have done anything about. You know, all the other fellows had a lot of publicity somehow or other, but why he got so neglected, I just don't know. He was able to document, to a large degree, the Indian culture before, you know, the large-scale arrival of Europeans some 80, 90 years later so that his accounts are extraordinarily valuable for ethnologists and people who are Indian, in, interested in the Indian way of life before the impact of European settlement. With the exception of a gravel road, the Livingston Gap hasn't changed much from the time Peter Fiddler came through here. It's a popular fishing and recreation spot. The best access to the backcountry is still by horseback. I think it's significant because he was here you know, 80 years before uh, the rest of uh, the Europeans moved into this area before the fabled Northwest Mounted Police moved into this area. He was on his own. He must have been an extraordinarily brave man to have done that, particularly during the winter, um, when his chances of surviving probably were pretty low. If it hadn't been for the Pagans looking after him, and they did look after him very carefully, if it hadn't been for the Pagans, there's no doubt about it, he'd never have survived the trip. There are no known pictures of Peter Fiddler, Yet the picture he painted as he traveled through this area nearly 200 years ago still lives on in his personal diary. He was the first one, person to record seeing the Athabasca tar sands. He was the first person to record seeing a cactus, coal, uh, Chinook winds. And he was the only person who ever saw and wrote about an actual working buffalo jump. So, I mean, he was a man, he was the first. With the bicentennial of his journey through this rugged and spectacular land scheduled for next year, local historians say Peter Fiddler will finally be getting the recognition he so deserves.